Thank you, Kristen. So ladies and gentlemen, after this extraordinary journey into the future, uh, I, I have over here something really interesting. You know what? Sometimes time just doesn't stick with you. And I, I, I dislike, you know, changing anything in any order. But sometimes you just have to make space for some things. And I'm very, very thankful to Garima. Garima, thank you for making this adjustment for us. Uh, I, I'm bringing in this panel before the next one. I want to welcome over here, Mrs. Uh, Amrita Berman. She's the deputy director of uh, Sunbeam Group of Institutions, Varanasi, and a passionate educator who delivers uh, you know, uh, education, I think, straight from the heart. Uh, I'm gonna introduce her probably widely and uh, you know uh, after she has spoken because i'm very mindful and she's messaged me about the time as well she needs to be somewhere and uh, vasuda uh, dr vasuda nilmani i couldn't have introduced you better she's in a car and taking this uh, session she has to be somewhere so both our speakers are here and uh, vasuda is an author and also is a principal at rock so, uh, rock woods international school udaipur I'll introduce them on the other side and I'll give this platform to, to take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Minakshi. Thank, did thank I you so much, Minakshi. Sorry, did I even announce the uh, panel? No, I don't think I did. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the kind of hurry that we are trying to do and make space for you. Uh, please take it away with reimagining the entire future of education or with AI. Please go ahead. Right. Thank you so much. And uh, before I begin, I really want to apologize. I think both Vasudha and I are kind of caught up at different uh, places and different things. And whoever has made room for us, I really want to thank you and really apologize to the audience and everyone. So um, Vasudha and I were actually supposed to have a, a conversation on uh, reimagining the future of education uh, with AI. And uh, we were supposed to be three, but we are two, but we're still going to make it happen. That's what we discussed and yes. decided. Because I think that the, the topic is uh, extremely close to the heart of all um, education is because AI has actually been the buzzword around and everybody's been discussing. And I've been listening to such wonderful speakers talking about AI. So um, we were actually, uh, the, the first thing that we are supposed to discuss, and I'm just going to mention it, and I'm going to allow first Vasudha to go, and then probably I'll add whatever we, uh, I, I feel are my thoughts, is about um, Vasudha balancing uh, automation and uh, personalized uh, learning. So it's like, uh, you know, what do you think? How can we actually uh, strike a balance between uh, leveraging um, automation for efficiency and ensuring that personalized learning experiences that cater to individual student needs also happen. So how are you uh, working towards and what are your thoughts in balancing the two? Uh, thank you, Amrita, ma'am. And uh, of course, thank you, Garima, for making that adjustments. As you see, we both were caught up and uh, we are. So when we, when we talk about uh, personalized learning and AI, I think uh, uh, they both go hand in hand now because uh, 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 we were talking about a decade ago, we, were we used to talk about technology how technology is you know part of our lives and how technology strengthens the teachers and and now it is ai so and ai is going to stay and i i feel that it is going to advance further so so when we talk about it there have been many reports by mckenzie there have been many reports when we talk about teacher development we'll, we'll talk about that uh, but uh, uh, there are certain uh, schools around the world and one school particularly in down south so they have developed algorithms to study uh, the the students learning patterns so when students learning patterns are studied and uh, so much so uh, uh, today i mean on this day last year we attended a master class of design uh, future by by general ray and uh, we were very astonished that uh, ai was uh, uh, studying our behavioral patterns 
how we were participating in the class and at the end of the day they gave us a complete report that in uh, in this particular segment we were very involved in this particular segment we were not involved uh, through our facial expressions through our everything uh, they were able to gauge that so when we as educators when we strike the balance between these two things wherein we are ensuring that uh, students are able to learn at their own pace students have the the personalized learning and of course it it is i always feel and I, i feel and i'm a very strong proponent of less student teacher ratio when we have 24 to 25 in a classroom and then we talk about personalized learning it of course it makes lot of sense and um, uh, uh minakshi will agree with me now we have a lot of ai driven classrooms they have act and interactive engaging online teaching experiences collaboration is there and uh, we used to do minecraft long ago so minecraft is something kahoot is there so children are getting involved educators are getting in involved and this virtual and augmented reality create massive learning environments for them and uh, if we amrita ma'am if we remember during covid times we had done lot of virtual expeditions in the classroom uh, in the in our uh, virtual classrooms where you know all the animal kingdom was there in the in the rooms and all that so yes i think uh, there has to be blend because uh, it is the time for collaborative intelligence it is the time of exponential mindset thinking and it is going to stay and carry on so now your yeah, points so, please yeah so i i completely agree i don't think there's really much that i want to add to this but i completely agree with the fact that it is it is automation and personalized learning that go pretty much hand in hand in fact i think without automation today personalized learning is tough to do and you mentioned about large classes and i also wanted to tell you that our own personal experiences that we have huge classes so let me not take the same names of you know ai tools that that i think we all know about and we are trying to use and many more that are being created which we don't even know about you know and things are developing in fact actually things are developing at such a fast pace that uh, we as educators it's very difficult for us to keep pace with that but having said that about the automation part i think it is automation in large numbers which makes it easier for us to know Absolutely. our children well because if we talk about of diverse classes and inclusivity i think it is automation that leads to personalized learning because it yes. is through automation and ai in automation i think is at a very different level altogether the kind of analysis that ai is doing the in depth analysis the quick analysis that is doing and putting in front of us i think that's what is leading to a lot of personalized learning and i want to add this uh, point which i think we we would be uh, touching on a little later it's about a child getting so involved and so engrossed because there is so much of in depth analysis that he's loving it and he's enjoying it so you know this, this automation and personalized learning go oh, absolutely hand in eye i completely agree with you so so our next point of discussion uh, vasudha is about how can ai empower students to take an active role in their educational journey fostering a sense of autonomy and curiosity and i'll just take this up uh, uh, first because this is what actually i was talking about because i think that when a child has this in depth analysis gets to know where he is going he is learning after that at his own pace there's so much that ai makes possible for children the world is open to them that they they uh, do a lot of research there is so much of curiosity they go from one thing to the other they get answers to where they stand the predictive you know, till now i think uh, as much as i have understood of ai ai now is very predictive in nature because there's so much of learning on its own it is actually predicting to a child as to how his performance is going to be where is it exactly that he is missing out and what is it that he can do to improve himself 
which is in a way without automation and help of ai quite impossible for a teacher so i think the empowerment that children are getting today is great and this empowerment is being enjoyed more by the teachers and when they pass it on to their kids i think both of them work hand in hand in actually making the best out of ai and automation over to you for your thoughts on this point absolutely and uh, you will agree with me ma'am that uh, uh, our generation this this uh, whether it is gen z or alpha generation they are highly highly metacognitive so so they use they know technology better than the, us they use technology better than us and uh, and trust me you know my my grade uh, eight students um, use uh, chat gpt in such a manner using the best use of it because they understand that there is plagiarism involved they understand there are things involved so what they are going what they do is they take hints from there and then they start you know they develop their own um, answer statements and everything and uh, as you said that you know when they are engaged they are intrinsically motivated then what happens is the best thing that that happens is that we have we all have uh, learned about pedagogy we have heard about andragogy which is a child central learning but now they are uh, paving the pathway for themselves we are where they are talking about hetagogy that's a self directed learning and ai helps them to do that because what happens is when when we were students we were kids there was nothing like that we had there there was a set pattern now the world is open to them and how they use it in an efficient manner i think as educators that's our role to uh, teach them because uh, minakshi knows that i have been a very strong proponent of technology no, not from now but from a from a very long time and i usually try to do experiments with the with the learning of students so at that time when uh, people used to say no 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 technology is not good and you know there were parents had lot of issues i'm talking about 10 years 10 15 years ago 15 years ago rather but but now you know uh, technology is there and there are some reservations among some parents or some educationists you know who feel that you know why ai why chat gpt and then you know uh, they are comfortable using themselves but when it comes to children so they are little hesitant so we we generally you know guide them and talk to them and tell them that you know if we teach them how to use it correctly then it is uh, it is a boon for all of them yes yeah thanks um, so i just wanted to add when you mentioned about people really not uh, i mean a sudden going away from technology post covid which again is a huge discussion in the education scene but i think as you rightly said we can't do without ai and you know and integration in education so let's not discuss that but what's very important is intelligent use of ai and i yes. think ethics in ai sits very why do you use because whatever i know i think minakshi knows it much better of ai is there could be a very very dangerous side of ai so children need to know how they want have to use it and i think that's where the role of education is come up in a very big way and we are the ones who need to use it ourselves very carefully need to teach the children the right prompt engineering if you are talking about chat gpt and i think the most important thing is engineering because there's always a dark world to everything so that's i think very very important for us as educators and that brings us to our last point of discussion but which but, is uh, amrita amrita ma'am one yeah. thing i would like to add because you brought ethics into this so there was a report by unesco right and very interesting report and uh, this was i think in 2022 21 or 22 where they said where uh, the author said that uh, uh, when we are talking about ai there is ethics there there is uh, uh, some rules and uh, the policy making but you know uh, it has come but when it talks about education sector Uh, whether it is higher education or k to 12 education so uh, there are not clear uh, guidelines how to use ai the ethics part and other things and the unesco uh, people are still working on that so i just wanted to add that which i think possibly is the fact that ai is also evolving 
the way things are being used in ai you know with ai it's evolving so i guess things will come up but the but i i don't want to go on with the point but the fact is it is it is really rapidly you know moving ahead and we really really need to therefore keep learning as it moves how we need to be safe so coming back to our last point of discussion is about the role of the educators and the teachers and you know the training of the teachers so what strategies can we as schools uh, employ to equip our teachers and the necessary skills and knowledge to seamlessly integrate the ai tools into their teaching methodologies so you go first and i'll have the last word there because i this okay. is the i am so passionate about this same here same here so okay so uh, uh, let me let me share one more uh, research with all of you so according to the mckenzie global teach and student survey 2020 our teachers work for about 50 to 55 hours a week but guess what they only spend 49% of this time directly interacting with students rest is spent on instruction engagement preparations to teach evaluations feedback and so on so they are so so engrossed so so tired in all the paperwork and here when we talk about ai it really helps them to uh, the the workload is uh, reduced when we are uh, i think we have uh, we do a lot of teachers development program so does amrita ma'am and of course uh, minakshi is a strong uh, i think proponent of uh, teachers training programs so what happens is that you know when we teach the teachers also to ask the right questions to use the right pro uh, prompts so now chat gpt there are and many other uh, versions of ai uh, engines are coming so what happens is now the uh, they are talking about it will be education specific also right now what we do when we we tell them uh, that you write uh, 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 you give your prompts you you tell them you want to make a lesson plan what minakshi was also uh, sharing some time back so so that makes their work very very easy and then teachers have a lot of time to spend on the socio emotional aspect of students that is so important because when they are busy in all these paperwork in assessments and everything so what happens is so they are not able to spend that quality time with the children and then they get lot of time and of course teachers professional development is a must and we also it is a continuous process that that we involve the teachers in all the decision making uh, things related to technology also Thanks, Arvind. So I just want to add this. Uh, I I guess uh, the importance of uh, training for teachers can never be undermined, and you beautifully put that across. But there are hindrances. So if you talk about strategies that are going to help the teachers in uh, developing themselves, their, their professional development, in terms of AI or any technology in a staff room. uh anywhere i think in the country of course I, i i'm not really talking about the world but i think pretty much all across the world there are all kind of teachers it's not only that they are keen learners or they are not some are not and some are that's again left uh, to, in, you know it's a different point but what happens is there are some for certain reasons maybe of age experience being in love with technology hindrances to learning technology don't really get to learn technology or fall in love with this because they just keep themselves back that's one so the most important strategy is to create an ecosystem where in our systems for example you'll always have a younger one supporting the more experienced because they are the ones who's you know kind of stepping back and saying mujh se nahi hoga so no no you you know everybody right. can do it and when they know that they really perform well there is there are certain other things time becomes an issue uh, with a lot of teachers so we need to intertwine integrate time that is left free for the teachers to get themselves trained and all kind of support is needed for that i think an ecosystem has to be created in your school so i think that's one very important uh, strategy and i think one of the most important to a large extent is finances See, on the whole, I've noticed during this time, in fact, training has become cheaper. At a time when you only had to go out and get trained, 
with a lot of online stuff it is actually become cheaper because you're sitting in your house and here you can get trained and there's a lot that you know vinaksh and he pedagogics does and there are others in the market too but i think you still have to provide time and finances to your teachers so if you really want your teachers to develop you have to invest in them make it a point that that support is given and of course the last to motivate them and the most important teach them it's okay to fail unless Absolutely. and until you teach them that fine you fail and you still get up but try exactly. if that's not given that motivation is not given teachers don't learn so these are the few strategies that we try at sanbi absolutely wow. the same here powerful. same here I'm powerful words i must say from both of you and uh, amrita ma'am taking from your word on uh, you know i found this amazing strategy which is mostly used outside of this country very few in this country uh, our country are practicing this but what i what i really feel is that when we put teachers in a room and in my experience i have seen that vasudha you will also vouch for it that if you put those 40 or 100 teachers in a room and say you have a training session on a particular topic it might not interest them so what many schools do is they create a pocket from the school to say that's your pocket you could spend this on your professional learning so that you can actually upskill yourself reskill yourself or rather outskill yourself and take your learning forward and that is a huge yeah. yeah. game to add, i want to add one thing what we do and i maybe we'll have it this time uh what we do is say for example there's a, there's some kind of a event or something for the teachers rather than giving them anything else we are just giving them courses money for courses finances and they make their own choice because i don't know what is it that you want to do and what is it that interests you what is it that you lack in and you want to upskill yourself so i completely agree push them to do things that they like to do so yeah taking adding adding it here at uh, and of course uh, uh, i mean akshi knows it pretty well so what what i do personally is i have given them that okay these are few trainings coming up these are the things and if you want to do a, do that let us uh, uh, come to us and uh, sometimes you know the teachers are so self motivated they will get you know these things to me that okay you know i picked up picked this up for myself i'm i'm registering and i am doing and if this is not related to just cambridge it is maybe coursera udemy whatever yeah i think we lost vasudha there yes. and let that's let freedom <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Vasudha. I think we lost you in between. I should let you take that right, right. Thank you so much uh, for uh, you know joining us and uh, taking time from your well schedule uh, schedule that you have. But before you go, here's a scoop of ice cream for you. Don't forget to take this. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. And apologies, apologies. This is the ice cream you're giving us online. We deserve one offline. We're coming to you soon for the ice cream. Oh, my doors are open. Please, before you go, do drop into the chat window. What flavor of ice cream is this? Go ahead, people. Be creative and use your creative power to think about which flavor could this be. It's just not. AI, it's HI that is required. So be innovative, be imaginative, be unique, be absolutely delicious in thinking about what flavor of ice cream do you think you would like. Drop that in the chat window, and I'll catch it from there to serve it to you next time. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.